in today's program, we see forces in action. We're jumping from a plane, visiting the skate park, Carol's investigating muscles, and we're sliding on snow in Science Tube. A good way of understanding forces is to see them in action. Forces can change the shape of things. Forces can bend or twist things too. Forces can pull you up and down. Forces can move things. Kick with a big force, tiddlywink with a smaller force. Forces make things move and stop them from moving. The best known force is gravity. It pulls things down. The Newton meter measures forces. Forces are in action, around us, all day, every day. Emma thinks about skating every day and about forces every day, almost without realising. It all looks simple when you're this experienced, but when you start, it's a real challenge. So understanding forces can take you from this to a flying blur of acrobatics. Today, Emma's choosing a new board. So, looking at the basics, she needs two things. Something to stand on and something to ride on. Parts that take us to the extremes of friction. You stand on this, the deck. It's made of flexible wood. Good for jumping, but very smooth. So, pushing off on a board would be almost impossible. You need as much friction as possible between your shoe and the board. This grip tape does exactly that, grips. The rough surface grips the shoes onto the tape. If you've got the wrong shoes, you'll spend a lot of time on the floor. They need to have really flat bottoms. The greater the area of shoe that's in contact with the board, the greater the friction. So friction can be a useful force, and here it needs to be high so your feet stay in contact with the board. But there's a part of the board where you need friction to be as low as possible. It's not useful if the wheels keep stopping because friction slows them down. Emma's choosing wheels with the lowest friction she can get. Even so, sometimes the skaters are off the wheels. Emma's waxing the bar. The wax makes a really smooth layer on the top of the metal so that the bar shouldn't catch the bottom of the board. The friction will be reduced. Even so, it's easy to see why this is known as a grind. There's still more friction than when the board's on its wheels. So next time you're ollieing, think of forces. Skydivers in free fall, 
moving through the air at twice the speed of cars on the fastest motorway. They make it look graceful and elegant. But all that stands between them and certain death is the science of forces. They're falling because of gravity. This force attracts the skydivers towards the Earth. Gravity is strong and would make them go faster and faster if it wasn't for the air. The air rushing past them is far louder than on the windiest day on the ground. At these speeds, the air pushes back quite hard. It's another force, air resistance. Air resistance is another force pushing them in the other direction. But it's not enough to slow them down to land safely. That's where this comes in. It's a parachute designed to catch the air. Hannah's packing this as if her life depended on it. And it does. As Hannah jumps out of the plane, gravity takes over and she goes faster and faster. Eventually, at about 200 kilometers an hour, air resistance pushes back so hard that she gets no faster. But she won't slow down either. So it's the moment to find out just how well she's packed that parachute. Perfect. The huge canopy increases the air resistance and slows her down dramatically. Now the pull of gravity and the push of the air are nearly equal at a much lower speed. And Hannah falls back to Earth in perfect safety. Gravity and air resistance, two forces to remember if you jump out of a plane. Pushing on the pedals of a BMX makes it move. We're going to find out where the force comes from. Inside Matt's legs are muscles, and when they pull tight, his leg moves. Here's Carol with a leg we can look inside. So here we've got a chicken's leg. The joint is like Matt's knee joint, and the muscles she's pushing are similar to human leg muscles. Right, let's get in there. First of all, this top layer, it's the skin. Under the skin, these are the muscles that make animals move. So, if you eat chicken, you are eating the muscles. So the leg's completely covered in muscle tissue. Right, here we are. One chicken leg covered in muscle. Let's cut into the muscle and see what we find. See this white stringy bit? This is called a tendon and it's what attaches the muscle to the bone. And the tendons are particularly strong and difficult to cut through. Excellent. Now it's a bit messy with all the muscle, but you can clearly see there that that's the joint. This is the top part of the leg, and this is the lower part of the leg. And the joint moves like that so the chicken can bend its leg. 
much like we can bend our legs. So it's muscles that make the pulling forces that make us move. Once something or somebody starts moving, they keep on moving until a force stops them. That force could be friction. There's not very much between the snow and the boards, but much more friction when you fall over. Or at the top of the slope, it could be gravity that stops you. but you soon start to move off again in the other direction. So why do some things slide on snow and others not? It's easy to walk on the snow in these shoes. There's friction between the shoe and the snow. The force of gravity pulls the toboggan down the slope. It's greater than the force of friction between the snow and the toboggan. But on the toboggan, you can change the friction as you go down. Gemma's putting the brakes on. This makes the metal piece stick into the snow. Now there's a lot of friction between the toboggan and the snow, and Gemma slows down. Gemma and Claire are switching to snowboards. How do snowboards start and stop? The bottom of the snowboard is really smooth. At the top of the slope, Gemma and Claire tilt their boards. This reduces the force of friction between the snow and the board. The force of gravity takes over and pulls them down the slope. The snowboard skims the smooth surface of the snow. Once it has started, there's very little friction to slow it down, so they glide to the bottom. To try again, you have to overcome the force of gravity using the lift to go uphill. Gravity and friction. Two forces to remember when it snows.